Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you parameter modulation using MIDI in Reaper. Now, in the previous videos, I showed you parameter modulation a few different ways. We have a track in front of us here. Let's hear it. And it's going to our folder. So we put an EQ on here. Let's use a low pass filter. Crank up the bandwidth. We created a nice filter. And we modulated this using the volume or audio of our track by going here, choosing audio control, setting this to input one and two, or three and four for side chaining. So the filter is being adjusted based on the volume. I also showed you how to use an LFO right down here. And this modulates any parameter using a pattern. But in this video, we're going to do it a bit differently. We're going to choose the option down here, Link from MIDI. Now what's different about this is we can customize the modulation. So in our studio projects, we can use it as automation. And it's also useful for live performance. So let's choose this as our option. And if we go over here, we could choose MIDI. Then we could pick what type of MIDI input we want to use. We could choose continuous controllers. Let's choose a mod wheel. And let's set up a MIDI keyboard to control this. The keyboard I'm using looks like this. It has a mod wheel, a pitch wheel, and a bunch of faders and knobs. We'll get to those in a bit. But for now, we'll use the mod wheel. So let's create a new track. Let's name it MIDI Control. And from here, we're going to control the parameter on this folder track for this EQ or filter. So let's set up our input as MIDI and this controller. We use all channels. Put it into record. Turn on monitoring. And then we're going to send this to this track over here. So we'll grab our routing. Drag and drop it. Turn off audio, because we don't need to send audio, just MIDI. And make sure this is turned on. MIDI all. So it's going to send all MIDI channels to this track. So now if I play my MIDI keyboard, watch the meter right here. We can see we're getting signal. And also watch up here. So the signal is being sent to this track as well. So now with this set right here to mod wheel, if I move the modulation wheel on my controller, this should move. And it does. So now if I play the track, I can create my own pattern, which is a lot more controllable than trying to draw it as automation. Because obviously, we could go over here, automate this parameter, and just draw it in. But it's a bit harder to draw what we want. It's a lot easier to use a controller, like a mod wheel, a fader, a knob, and use this instead. So now if I want to record it, let's move this over. I can go into record on this track and record some MIDI. So let's record some mod wheel automation to control this parameter. And now we can view it by double clicking this, open this up, and switch this to mod wheel. Notice the little dot right here, letting us know that there's some data already there. 
So here it is right here. Play it back. And we could edit it just by drawing. But again, it's a lot easier to use our controller. Now going back over here, we can make adjustments with our baseline, where it starts, with the offset, and our scale. If we reverse the scale to this side, if I move the mod wheel up, our filter goes down. If I move it down, it goes up. Move us up here. So it still controls it, just in reverse. Moving it up goes down. Moving it down goes up. But it makes more sense in this situation to have it this way. So bring it up, moves it up, bring it down, brings it down. And we could adjust the offset to tweak it a bit further. So that's using the mod wheel. Let's choose another option. Instead of using the mod wheel, let's use another continuous controller. Now, if I go back to my keyboard, as I mentioned earlier, I have faders and knobs right on the MIDI controller. Now to be honest, I'm not sure what control number is set up for each of the faders or knobs. But that doesn't really matter, because we can figure it out like this. And let's set this by right-clicking to event list. So now if I go into record and move the fader on my MIDI controller, I can figure out what control number is set to the fader or knob I adjust. And we can see right here, it's controller information, and it's using controller number five. So that's what we're gonna set up over here. Instead of using the mod wheel, we'll switch it to controller number five, Portamento MSB. Again, it doesn't matter which one we use, because we're changing what it's used for. And now let's move the fader on a MIDI controller. And it adjusts that parameter. And again, we could tweak it using the baseline, the scale to reverse it, or the offset. So now let's record some data using the fader on the MIDI controller. And to check it, go down here, bring this up, and switch this to number five. And here's the data we just recorded. Play it back. Again, we can reverse it and tweak it. So as you can see, we can use any controller information right here. Any fader or knob that's on your MIDI controller can adjust any parameter in Reaper. Now right above here, we can choose 14-bit controller information, which is pretty much the same thing as this one, which is 7-bit, it just has more resolution. So in this situation, if the resolution isn't high enough, we could have chosen this one right here, number five and number 37. So by combining the two, we get more resolution for automation. But if you don't need it, just use this one. Now besides using continuous controller information, we can also choose notes. So let's choose C1 on our MIDI controller. And I'm gonna open this program right here called MIDI keys. So you can see when I hit the notes on the MIDI keyboard. I hit C1, see how it turns green right here? Now let's look over here. If I hit that same key, it adjusts the parameter. And again, we could tweak it. Now if I hit the key, it moves it over to there, which could be adjusted by adjusting the offset to here. So if I let go, it's here. Let's start that a bit higher. And if I hit it, it moves to there. Make that a bit lower. So if I play it and hit that note, it's gonna move back and forth between these two positions, on or off.
Now first, that doesn't seem that useful, but we could choose a parameter that's more appropriate for this use. So let's turn this off, and instead, let's choose Bypass. So I'll click this right here as the last chosen, go to Parameter Modulation, and turn MIDI on for this parameter. We'll choose MIDI Note, C1, and now if I hit C1, it bypasses this plugin. Let go, and it turns it back on. So it's a great way of bypassing our plugins. Let's set this a bit lower. So let's record some automation that way. And watch as I hit the note here, and now it's affected over here. So every time I hit the note and held it down, it bypassed this plugin or the filter. So if I play it back, and we can reverse it by moving the scale, put it over here, and now it'll start off bypassed. And when I hit the note, the plugin turns on. So it's a great way of automating by turning our plugins on and off by hitting a MIDI key. In this case, C1. We could also choose to use the pitch wheel. So now if I adjust the pitch wheel, it adjusts the frequency. And we could record automation that way. and it's recorded right here. And again, it's great for live or custom automating our parameters. Now right down here, we could choose channel pressure. This is what happens when you hit a key on your MIDI keyboard and push it down after you hit it. So if I hit my key and then push it down, it adjusts the parameter. Push it down hard, goes this way, and softer, it goes this way. Let's reverse it though. And adjust the baseline. So I can grab a key and just apply pressure to adjust the parameter. <laughs> The harder I push down, the more filtered it becomes. Now for most applications, we probably wouldn't use pressure this way, instead of a fader or a knob or even the modulation wheel. But there is an application where it's more useful. Let me show you. Let's add an instrument to this track. I'll choose Piano One by Sound Magic which is a great piano plugin that's free. Let's put it above the EQ. So this EQ is still filtering it. Now because my MIDI keyboard is still being sent here, if I play the keyboard, I hear the piano sound. But with this setup over here, using channel pressure, I can adjust the filter by pushing the keys down harder. But we can reverse it this way. Pretty cool effect. But we could also go back to our mod wheel. Right over here. And now the mod wheel affects our filter on the piano sound.
it to verse it? It's a pretty cool effect, which can really create a dynamic performance, as we can control that filter as we play. And we can reverse it and do the opposite. Or we can go back to our fader on our MIDI controller, number five, and control it through that fader. Let's bring this down to here. It's pretty cool. And again, it's great for live and automating in our project. Now, so far, we've only been controlling one thing at a time. But keep in mind, especially for live performance, you can control as many things as you want. So if your keyboard has all these faders and knobs and wheels, you can control a different parameter for each of them and then create your own dynamic performance where each fader or knob does a different thing. So one fader can control our filter, another can control volume or delay level or reverb level or anything you can think of. So you can be as creative and customized as you want. So anyway, that's parameter modulation using MIDI. I hope you learned something and I hope you could use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!